Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate this 26th Sunday of the year. In our readings today, we are spoken to by the prophet Amos and Jesus about our ability to notice what is going on around us in our social context and to respond to that as best we can. For the times perhaps that we have simply been worried about our own affairs and our own lives and not noticed the plight of others around us, let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord Almighty, Woe to those who are at ease in Zion and to those who feel secure on the mountain of Samaria. Woe to those who lie upon their beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the midst of the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David invent for themselves instruments of music, who drink wine in bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oils but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first of those to go into exile, and the revelry of those who stretch themselves shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Come, Lord, Lord, and and save us. us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry and the Lord who sets prisoners free. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and and save save us. us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just and the Lord who protects the stranger. Come, Come, Lord, Lord, and and save save us. us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, 
but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion from age to age. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and, and save, save us. us. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. O men of God, aim at righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ and this will be made manifest at the proper time by the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and dwells in the approachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Though Jesus Christ was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things, and now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to tell them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we were baptized, we or our parents on our part make a profession of faith. And that profession of faith is later confirmed, Timothy tells us in that second reading, when we speak up as witnesses to the truth. Jesus, if you think about it, spoke truth before Pilate, and Timothy alludes to that in what he tells us today. And we are invited to always speak the truth, but specifically and more pertinently, 
in moments perhaps of confrontation. To speak the truth is to be faithful to God and to the promise of baptism. I wonder what speaking the truth for us looks like in South Africa today. Both the prophet Amos and Luke's gospel seem to summarize our situation in a very sobering manner. And it seems to me they are both hugely uncomfortable in challenging in what they have to say. Amos is the well-known prophet of social justice in the Old Testament, and he speaks to the complacent wealthy in Judah and Israel. They are unconcerned about what is happening in the country, which is about to be destroyed by the Assyrians. Their lavish lifestyles undermine the very fabric of their country. They have no concern, we are told, for the plight of the poor, the same sin as the man that we meet in the gospel. And Amos warns them of the pending disaster and they ignore him. It seems to me that Amos's context is not too far from our own. The political classes and the rich in this country continue to live lavish lifestyles and spend extravagantly to the detriment of many who from day to day are struggling to survive, to pay bills for energy that does not often exist, to put food on the table, to educate their children. We cannot ignore the plight of Judah and Israel because that plight could be ours. We may not be attacked by the armies of Assyria, but might well be conquered by economic decline, poverty, misery, and even, dare I say it, a pending social uprising in this country that could become extremely violent. July 2021 was a warning to us. And so the prophet Amos invites us to be alert to what is going on around us in our society today? Do we know the plight of many people in this country whose daily life is simply a trial to survive? Notice too that the religious authorities were quiet and Amos speaks out against them as well. He invites us, religious people today, to ask ourselves that very same question. What should we be doing in the face of the pending disaster that is all around us? Amos may ask us to answer questions like, how are we using our voting power? How complicit are we in upholding the current status quo? And we do that in all sorts of ways by the people we support in the media or on social media, by even, at times, the big economic conglomerates that we get involved in and corporations. In the gospel, we hear that disturbing story of Lazarus and the rich man. And I wonder when we listen to this account and listen carefully, what rises up in us? Because very often, those who have feel uncomfortable and maybe even angry and resistant to the revolution that this story, this parable of Jesus seems to put before us. Maybe even there is guilt. Notice how the gospel never says that the wealth of the rich man is ill-begotten. Notice too that we are told that Lazarus is not the victim of the rich man either. The sin of that rich man is that his lifestyle is lavish and cushioned by that lavishness in such a way that he is completely oblivious to Lazarus's plight. He did not look beyond himself. The harshest words in the scripture 
are spoken to this rich man. He chooses to shut Lazarus out of his palace, but more importantly for Jesus, he shuts him out of his heart. He failed to see Lazarus as a fellow human being, someone who also shared his humanity, who had hopes and dreams like he, the rich man, had for himself. Lazarus was materially poor, but the rich man had a real poverty of heart. He was devoid of any sense of compassion and love for Lazarus. Shockingly, Jesus tells us the dogs had more compassion on him than his fellow human being. That rich man suffered from the sin of omission. It was not about what he did, but what he failed to do that Jesus points out. Mother Teresa said, The greatest evil in the world today is terrible indifference towards one's neighbor, which seems to be so widespread. And so there is a very difficult and uncomfortable question and invitation for us. The first one, to ask ourselves how wealthy we are. And not necessarily materially wealthy, but how wealthy we are in our compassion for fellow human beings. Not how much you have in the bank, but how much compassion, love, and care you have for your neighbor. Amos tries to warn us, like Jesus, that our baptism or confirmation urges us to face the truth. And this is one of the truths that we have to face today. Are we listening to the Lord, or are we like that rich man, so self-focused that we face the same fate as him, begging God for mercy for what we were invited or urged to do a long time ago? Today's scripture texts are hard to hear. I wonder we might ask ourselves, where do they leave you? Cushioned and comfortable and resistant? Or rather, do they leave you feeling that there is an invitation from the Lord here to look at your own life and to ask, how might I stretch out or reach out to the Lazaruses, which are very many amongst us today? Let's make a profession of faith by praying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have heard God's word. Let us now respond to that word by our own words of prayer. For all of us, that we may be attentive to the needs of those around us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For government leaders, that there may be an end to corruption, political infighting, and a sincere effort to eliminate poverty and injustice. Lord, Hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
for all who work for the poor and the disempowered, that God may bless all their efforts and reward their generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For South Africa, our country is one of the most unequal societies in the world. We pray that we would work together so that all may enjoy their basic human dignity and have what they need for themselves and their families. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who live on the peripheries and of society and the church, that they would come to know through our efforts the love and care of God for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause in silence for our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, in our spiritual poverty, we present to you these our prayers, knowing that you are a God who is rich in mercy and compassion, and answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, our Son and your risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. We ask you to receive us in peace, sacrifice your faith, humble, contrite hearts, and wash our iniquities. Cleanse us of all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat from it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at His command. And may we, your church, stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's pray now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously go in peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer those around us a sign of God's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, world. grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. But in blood of Christ, bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in the glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.